on glasses on you got to be looking Uh, for hockey talk so that's one of the reasons we started this podcast mm -hmm. is so that we could kind of have something for panthers and lightning fans to go about and we're in it serena nice (laughs) nice work by ben hey everybody welcome to the cats and bolts podcast i think this is episode 15 is it not ben something like that but you know what forget about the numbers this is literally like going to be my favorite podcast. I don't mind. Of, of them all. You can go to the widescreen, Benny. We put the the question out to our viewers a while back. Who would you like to see on the Cats and Bolts podcast? And this guy right here, Peter Worrell, was runaway the winner from the fans. Say, you got to get him on. You got to get him on. So Serena there, Rod here, and Peter Worrell, welcome to the Cats and Bolts podcast. Well, thanks for having me. And obviously those fans were, you know, very, uh, very smart. They were <laughs> very, yeah. very well cultured. And they picked, Listen, they picked Right I now. feel bad <laughs> because can you attest that I've been stalking you for about two months? No, that's not me. I have I have gotten a lot of f- strange phone calls and email and text messages at, at strange hours from a number I did not know. Yes. You won't hear from me again. I appreciate, but I appreciate you coming down. I really do. And one of the most popular Florida Panthers of all time, Peter Worrell, joins us. And so I got a <clears> list of topics for after Peter's gone. I got a lot of questions for him as well. But the Panthers fans will know his history here. But did you know he's from just outside Montreal? How do you say it? Uh, Pierrefonds. 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 Quebec. Quebec. And he played <laughs> Laval in the Q. What nope. were they? What, nope. what was that? Nope. Hall? Hall Olympics. Yeah. Hall Olympic. I got yeah. it written down wrong. So you hosted the Memor in 97. We did. We okay. did. I don't know why I wrote Laval. <laughs> Hull Olympic, which is now called Gatineau Olympic. Gatineau right? Olympic, yes. 94 to 97, and then into the NHL, which you all know with the Panthers, uh, 97 to 04. 19 goals, 27 assists, 46 points. It is 351 games played, and a whopping 1,554 penalty minutes. So without further ado, uh, Peter Worrell and Serena, your witness, please, because I could go on forever, as you know, with Peter. I know I could ask Peter questions all day, but I think what we were talking about outside before the show even started about what you do. So fill everybody in on what your job is, really what you do <clears throat> on a daily basis. Yeah, I mean, right now my role is uh, as a brand amb- ambassador for the Florida Panthers. So um, m- the mission and the goal is to try to bring more people to the game and bring the game to more people. So uh, working with the Y, working with the Parks and Recreations in, in Fort Lauderdale, uh, we're trying to really uh, engage people, uh, younger kids, into into introductory aspects of the game, getting them into ball hockey, floor hockey, street hockey, whatever you want to call it. Um, but bringing it into those different situations and getting kids involved with it. Um, we're opening the brand new War Memorial and trying to uh, create programs where we can bring different kids uh, into the building and, and and try to you know show that the game really is for everybody, and not just use it as a, as a as a nice catch line, but it, it is reality. Like we want to really ingratiate ourselves uh, in the Fort Lauderdale area, in the Bro- Broward County area, in the, in the greater uh, South Florida area. Um, you know, I think we've been a, a, a well-kept secret in the area for, for 30 years. Uh, we've had peaks and valleys, a lot of a lot of valleys, but um, you know, we're in a really good spot right now. We have uh, an exciting team right now. Um, and this is an opportunity for us to really build our, our fan base, uh, not just to have people sit in the stands, but people to, to really love this group of players, to really love this organization. Uh, like I said, I think the players that we have today, not only are they talented, not only exciting, uh, they're community-minded. Uh, they really want to, to engage uh, with, with the city. And uh, you know, we have to build that kind of base um, for them to, 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 to prosper. So nice vocabulary for a hockey player. I, I, I it's not just a hat rack. Yeah. I got, <laughs> I got uh, not just I a, got... not just a hockey player, <laughs> but a fucking ingratiate. <laughs> I haven't heard that in 25 years. Uh, so good job. Good on hey, you. But I'm a little you. shocked that because I, she's been here, what, six years, mm-hmm. me, this is my third season following mm-hmm. the Panthers to hear that they never really did outreach or got the game to the kids surprises me a little. What what changed? What made them want to do that? Um, well, a I think with this ownership group, uh, Mr. Viola, is, you know, is the beginning with that, and on down to Matthew Caldwell and into uh, all uh, Bryce um, Holloway and other people in our organization. I think they they've always they came in with a, with an idea of uh, when they bought the team, not just to you know, put a, a product on the ice. You know, I think that's the easy thing. I think that's what 
we've done here for 20 years. We're like, just we're just going to put a product on the ice, and we expect people to come and 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 watch it. Um, I think they came with a mindset of uh, we have to build a community. We have to uh, in, again build ourselves, ingratiate ourselves into the community, <laughs> and 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 give people a reason to want to to want to buy in. Um, you know, I was lucky when I when I first came to this team. Uh, you know, I, I came right after the, uh, you know, the founders, right after the, the, you know, the the, the Brian Scrudlins and, and the Scott Mellonbys and uh, guys who, when they when they stepped foot here, really believed. Not only was it their last chance to be NHL players, but they had to build that community, and and we they did so much to get it started, and they try to pass that on to us younger guys, and somewhere along the line, it got lost in in, in translation, right? And um, it's unfortunate. But we are where we are, and, and I think at this point now we are really trying to get back to that those roots, and really try to you know you know get out there in the community and and and, and put our foot in the in in the sand. Um, again, we have some players on the team who are incredible. Uh, you know, obviously a Captain Barkoff, uh, Mac and Chuck, um, the Lamborghini. <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, we have some some really you know good community guys on our team right now, and and. Uh, you know, we're trying to just uh, create some bridges for them so they can get out there in the public a little bit more and, and, and get involved. I've been chomping at the bit to ask this question since before when we were talking about mm -hmm. fighting. Mm -hmm. We had a big discussion about you fighting George LaRock. Mm -hmm. And what is your most memorable fight? <clears throat> Junior, NHL, whatever. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, had a, I, had a, I had a few. Okay, yeah, um, that's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, I, I, I mean, I, I think you know, there was you know some some guys that you, that you fought that, you know, as a kid you grew up and and kind of saw and and uh, when you're the 15 year old you would be like I can't believe I'm on the ice with him, let alone uh, trading fight uh, trading punches with him. But you know, obviously, I think everybody's measuring stick back in those days was to to go against Probert, right? So uh, the first fight against Probert um, was exciting for me. Uh, the first fight against Ty Domi was fun because you know he has a he had a big target, uh, <laughs> even had a little body, but um, you know you you knew you could punch him a lot. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, for me, I, honestly, there, I always say there was there was one fight uh, that really stuck out to me. Um, I just got called up from the minors. Uh, I was not supposed to play that night. Um, Got on the plane. Plane was like packed, so like I had a tight seat. Like I was uncomfortable. Didn't sleep the whole way. Didn't have anything to really eat. The plane landed late. I uh, got stuck in traffic in 595 trying to get to the rink. Uh, I get there and they're like, "Kid, you're playing." I was like, "Oh, geez, uh, it's gonna be interesting." <laughs> Luckily, I'm a fighter, so I only get like two or three shows. Um, <laughs> So went out first shift and scored my first goal. So I was like, you know, super excited. Come um, on, Mario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. It, it was very Mario-esque. Yeah, I will say that. It was yeah, no, oh, yeah. just the most beautiful goal you'll ever see, right? So <laughs> Who'd um, you beat? So. Uh, Richie Perron. Okay. Which uh, he was from my hometown. I'd scored him all summer. It was <laughs> <laughs> easy. It was taking, you know, house money. But... Um, <laughs> So I scored that first shift, and I'm, you know I was feeling pretty good. Billy Lindsay gave me a little draw pass and and uh, scored it, and you know I'm sitting on the bench, I was feeling good, and coach put me out for my next shift, and I was still excited, I was still you know really jazzed up, and all I heard was a hey, kid, good job, but we're fighting now. And I looked over, it was Tony Twist, and I was like, oh jeez, oh and Twister. It was the only time, I think for all those reasons, like I was sitting there with my knees shaking, like oh no, I got <laughs> I got to go with this guy. Um, you know, I had I had never fought him at that point. I had heard stories from Paul Laws at that time, like that he had broke two of his helmets during fights. So I was like, yeah, I was always a little wary. Um, so you know, puck dropped, and I think I, you know, gloves dropped, and I think I threw two real quick punches, got landed pretty good, and then I just absolutely put a seatbelt on. I'm not even gonna lie about it. <laughs> and uh, this man just kept spinning me around for about a minute. And uh, which no one's ever really done. And then he just kind of like with one hand, kind of like like this, and my whole body kind of just exploded. And I was on my knees, and I looked up, and I was like, you know, it was, it's been a great 21 years. I really enjoy it. <laughs> it's <my> over. <laughs> it's done. And yeah. And then uh, he let up, and you know, we were sitting in the penalty box afterwards, and um, he's like, kid, great job. Uh, 
did a really good job. Like, you got some really long arms. I was like, they're, they've never been longer before. They won't be longer again. <laughs> like, I, I use every single inch of them. Um, the and then, uh, <laughs> you know, he retired and he was doing radio in, in St. Louis. And a couple of years later, you know, he, he had me on for an interview and was like, yeah, you know, you're probably the only guy that beat me in my last couple of years. I was like, beat you? I was just trying to survive. I don't, <laughs> I don't, know, what, I don't know what tape you saw. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was that was one of the ones that 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 uh, jumps out to me, I guess. Yeah. Well, you when I brought up your junior <clears throat> days, and I apologize that I didn't mm. have hold. You yeah. corrected me, but you said w when it was fun. Yeah. Uh, and I have I have my next question is describe your NHL experience. It sounds like that wasn't fun. Overall, being a fighter wasn't fun. Like junior was fun. Explain that, please. Yeah. No, I mean, <clears throat> let me clarify. Like, being in the NHL was the epitome of my life like that was it was absolutely fun i i enjoyed every minute of it i enjoyed uh that my teammates i enjoyed um you know playing for this fan base i enjoyed being here in south florida uh i didn't enjoy the losing <laughs> and you know and and obviously the role was was a lot more limited than um than i had in the past right so um you know even in the minors you know i played on the first line i was on the power play um, you know, I got to Florida and there was better players than me. And that's that's what the NHL is. And and you have to um you have to deal with that. You have to grow up and and, and find something that's gonna be successful for you. So in no in no shape or form do I look back and, and, and disappointed or uh regret anything. Like I, I loved every minute of it. Uh junior hockey was just different. I mean, it's your kids, right? You're you're a bunch of kids, you're a bunch of idiots, you don't know anything. Uh, you think you do. You think you're mature. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I was lucky in, in the situation I was with in a hall where, um, you know, we won two Quebec leagues. We, we won a Memorial Cup. We were uh, the year that we didn't go to the Memorial Cup was probably our best team. I think we had set a, a Canadian record for most wins in a row at that year. Um, again, I was, <clears throat> you know, dropping gloves a lot, but I was also on the first line. I was a point of game guy. I was on the number one line in the country. Um, you know, first unanimous all-star. I mean, it was, there was a lot of things that were going on at that time. Um, and again, it wasn't even a, a situation where um, it was something where, you know, that I was striving for. It was just something that kind of came along and I was, in, you know, enjoying the ride and um, wasn't even really thinking about the next step uh, until I got drafted. So, I mean, it was just kind of, you know, just have fun. Met a bunch of guys um, that I'm still good friends with this day. Um, you know, some guys that made the league, some guys that didn't. Um, you know, I, I walked into a junior team that was supposed to be rebuilding. Uh, I think we had 14 rookies that year. Um, so we, we just kind of just bonded and, and and went to war for each other. Um, and again, we made we, we won the Quebec League that year, which was uh, a shocker. Uh, we should have probably stopped there because uh, that Memorial Cup visit was not uh, was not quite too wasn't too. Where pleasant. was that one? Uh, it was in Kamloops. Oh, yeah, no, host so. one. Well, nobody was beating Kamloops. No, nobody was. And Brandon was there too. Right? Brand, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's the problem. So our first game, we got uh, shellacked by Brandon. Uh, I think thirteen one. Um, and I I think I, I was one of the few guys that the coach thought played a good game, so he rewarded me. Uh, from going from fourth line, to, okay, kid, you're gonna play second line tomorrow. So I was like, all right, let's go. And uh, I got I got to line up against uh, uh, Wade, uh, not Wade Rennan, um Jerome McGinley, uh Shane Doan, and uh, Darcy. That's Tucker's your reward, yeah. It's like, yeah, <laughs> go get him, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, minus five. That was fun. <laughs> they can all play. Yeah. Well, well, at least uh, you got uh, a couple championships to absolutely. your credit. Absolutely, absolutely. I That's can keep a, going. Oh, I could go all day. <laughs> when you played, when you played on the power play, did they literally just stick you in front of the net and say, "Do something yeah, here"? Yeah, no. I mean, I was, you know, big and strong. Um, growing up in Montreal, like I was always one of the top scorers in in, in the province. So, like, I I always could score goals. I uh, good high and eye coordination. Um, and yeah, I was I was a nuisance in front, right? So, um, yeah, I mean that was that was my main role. Um, but you know, it, it wasn't just stand there and 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 plant your feet. Like there was a lot more movement. Like there was a lot uh, 
a lot of passing of pucks out of that situation. I mean, it was, you know, I, again, I played with some really good players, you know, I, especially at the junior level. Like, they, like my line mates were incredible players. Who were they? Uh, uh, Malta Menard and, and Pavel Rosa. They didn't, you know, they never really had the shot afterwards. But at the junior level, they were, you know, 150-point guys every year, right? So uh, they were really talented guys. Um in today's NHL, they would have they would have been superstars, smaller, right? Yeah. Sure, yeah, they're smaller guys that uh, in the old NHL they didn't really get an opportunity in. But um, yeah, it was uh, it was it was a, a little a little bit different role. Yeah. Well, let me say this: as <clears throat> junior people, I remember watching you uh, in junior, as I mm. said, and then so I was pulling for you in the NHL because I'm mm. like, this guy can play. Mm, thank you, you know. So well, it's we knew that you could, you mm. know, and and. I got written down here, Google your name, as I did getting ready for this show. And the racial incidents come up. And I just wonder when you were going through that, it wasn't just in the NHL, obviously, your whole life, probably. Mm -hmm. When did you realize that more people support you? <clears throat> did you need help through that, getting through that? Or what got you through that? What's getting um, you through that? Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I, 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 w I was lucky in a, lot of, in a lot of situations, right? So growing up as a kid, um, I had some of it go at me, but I, I also played with a guy, Jason Doig, uh, another young um, African-American, played for Team Canada World Juniors, mm -hmm. um, you know, and he was the star mostly of the team. So, like, he, he took a lot of the animus, um, and I, then I was, like, the, uh, you know, I was a sidekick, really, <laughs> in that way, right? So, um, so we, we got to deal with it together. Uh, you know, both of us were, were fortunate enough. We had some strong families and strong pa uh, parents around us that um, that got us through it. Um, you know, that always um, didn't coddle us by any by any stretch of the imagination, but didn't allow uh, any hate to, to deter us from what we wanted to do. You know, we liked to play hockey. We loved to play hockey, um, and and nothing was going to stop us from that aspect, right? So. Um, you know, I, I'm 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 eternally grateful for the family that I grew up with, um, my teammates on those teams. Um, you know, again, I had some really good some really good teammates on the team. A lot of guys that ended up playing major junior, uh, four guys that ended up playing in the NHL. Um, you know, and they were all high quality guys, all, all high character guys that um, we never even thought about anything other than we were just teammates and friends and hockey players, right? Um, then I get to junior, um, and, um, you know, probably, probably junior was probably the, the, where I had some of the, the hardest incidents or the, the worst incidents, mm -hmm. I should say. Um, but again, I, I would swear my luck, you know, continues to work. I, I, I played for the whole Olympic. I played for, uh, Charlie Henry. I played for Claude Julian and, and, uh, uh, and and they were uh, just just phenomenal leaders, phenomenal people um, that would not allow uh, that nonsense, um, or they try to cover, uh, shield me from it as much as they could, but also were there to support me uh, when things you know were a little bit too much. You know, a 16, 17 year old kid um, when you have a whole whole building. <laughs> You know, wishing you uh, ill, uh, not for anything you did on the ice, but just for showing up. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's 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 certainly not easy. Um, but again, uh, you know, the teammates I, I had, you know, the, you know, Colin White and um, you know Jose Theodores and 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 guys of that nature who, um, you know, the names that you you'll never even really know, but. Guys who just you know were there and 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 put an arm around me and 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 let me know that I was their brother and that this wasn't right. Um, you know I'm I'm internally grateful for that. Um, and then obviously you know coming to this organization uh, at the time especially, um, you know Brian Murray not only drafted me but um, you know kind of thought of me as as a, you know a, a chip off the old block. So. Um, <laughs> Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But, um, it speaks a lot to what, what he was, but um, <laughs> former Regina Pats coach, he, so he's got to he, be great. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was it was you know whether it was him or Mr. Tory. Um, again, there, these were people that always believed in me as me, um, good or bad. 
Um, it was never about, you know, uh, being another or, um, you know, filling a need. It was, they, they felt as I was, I was a person that was uh, a good player, a good teammate, uh, and somebody that, that would, they were proud to be associated with. So that was always um, something that, that was important to me. Um, and it's something that, you know, to this day still resonates with me and, and still drives me and, and still um, helps me try to be the best person I can be on a daily basis. Good people around you. Yeah, it's it's a good goal in life. Yeah. Yeah, when we had Dale Talon on here, <laughs> we were talking about surrounding yourself with the right people and the mm. good people and him being a general manager we were talking about who he hires and mm. it's just so important Correct. to have that support system that you believe in that believes in you mm -hmm. regardless of what it's about regardless whether or not it's a hockey team or a whatever business oh i think so i mean obviously you want to have as much talent as you possibly can i mean obviously especially in a, in a, in a competitive environment in a sports environment you, you talent talent trumps everything right but uh, with that being said, if, if if the people around you you don't like, <laughs> it's it's a lot harder to, to to really get about your job, right? It's harder to to push that extra limit that 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 you all have to get past. Uh, if if in your back of your mind it's like I just want to smack the crap out of this guy, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, um, having having the right people, having the right atmosphere, having the right character uh, is always important. Um, and I think the teams that are successful aren't only just the teams that get along and, 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 and are talented, but are the teams that have that culture, have that focus, have that sense of identity of, of we're, all, we're all here for the same thing. We're all here um, to make any sacrifices that are necessary. And we're going to do it by supporting each other. Uh, you doing better helps me be better, right? You, you taking my spot makes me have to work harder to get my spot back. And it do, in, that, in that, our team gets better, especially if we do that in a way that's positive, where we're not trying to stab each other in the back, but we're trying to, we're trying to pull the, that next guy up, right? And, and um, like I said, those are the teams, those are the businesses, those are the law firms, those are the doctor's practices that are, are successful, I think, in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. Sounds very easy to do. <laughs> it's like rare, though. It's the winning programs versus the ones that aren't. You've mentioned from the moment I talked to you out in the street about this new ownership and this Panthers group and this, you're very revved about it. And you're obviously, well, you're working for them. Yeah. But you follow, uh, but you mean it. And yeah. you follow the team very closely. I'm just wondering what you thought about the game coming out of Christmas when Lomberg one punched Keegan Kolasar. <laughs> Were you at that game? Uh, I came late. Uh, we had a, uh, an alumni game uh, right afterwards, so I, I actually missed the fight. But I, I think everybody. So did Kolasar. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I, we had the same perspective on it right? <laughs> in, in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, no. I mean, look, I, I actually saw uh, Ryan after the game, and um, we talked a lot about it a little bit. And um, I know how that, how good that feels uh, when that happens. Um, but you know that kid is 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 just such a hard worker, such a good person, such a uh, a credit to what this what this organization uh, wants and needs, and uh, uh, and and how hard he works in the community. Um, so when he has those successful moments, I, I I am generally happy and excited for him. Um, and I know it it it's uh, it, it it you know even in this day of, of fighting uh, disappearing. Um, you know, I know when moments of that like that happen, it, it revs up your bench and revs up everybody uh, in the building, um, and you know it, it can help your drive your team to victory. I guess it was the last game before Christmas, December twenty yeah. third. But even Lomberg Ryan seemed surprised that he one punched Colazar. It seems like he had a look, jump man, to do it. It's not a it's it's not an easy thing. So I think I, I think every time you, you you get in a fight, I mean. I, at the NHL level, you get in a fight. Like everybody's tough, everybody can handle it. So like, you don't expect that you're gonna have that that one puncher. So when it does happen, it's like, ooh, hey, okay, <laughs> <laughs> this is over, and I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> well, we've been debating this all season on this show. Is this a tough team or not? This Panthers team. I don't really think they're tough but a guy said to me recently at the beach house which incidentally thank you to the crew at the beach house uh, for the 100 hundred dollar gift card here we hey ben we got a <laughs> yeah okay. there we go uh, double thumbs up there you go a hundred dollar yeah. gift card from our friends at the beach house in pompano you'll love it and baresco right across the street but they one of the guys said to, it was ash said to me 
this Panthers team, I love watching them. You mess with one, you mess with them all. Yeah. And that, to me, is a tough team. Uh, no, I, I actually agree with that. Um, team toughness is, is way, in a lot of ways, is more important than just having the one designated guy, right? Because you can, you can hide from the one designated guy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if, you know, if I was put, dropped into this day, today's game, I mean, you know, uh, Connor McDavid would not have to worry about me, right? Like he's he's <laughs> he's safe. Like it's it's not even an issue. Um, but when everybody on your team is going to be able to will stand up for the next guy, a it shows you what kind of team you are. But like it's hard to play against, right? Like okay, I'm, I I can't stand Kachuk. He's a he's a oh, I just want to kill. I want to get him. I'm going to go get him. But as soon as I do, I got to deal with Bennett. I got to deal with Reinhardt. I got to deal with Barky. I got to deal with. Ekblad, I got to do with Montour. Like, that's frustrating. That's tough and it's annoying. Um, and, you know, it, that's, that's, what t that's what a tough team is, right? Fighting in itself is, trust me, I'm not trying to just, uh, speak poorly of it, but, like, it's a, it's a one and done type thing, right? But, like, that, that constant, constant pressure that, that everybody on the team will bring is, is, is a lot more taxing and a lot more intimidating in some ways um you know than worrying about a dinosaur like me like i said <laughs> the other dinosaur and the other team might be worried but like their <laughs> skill guys were weren't paying me any mind <laughs> mm -hmm. well i can't decide if you're denigrating fighters or not because Stu, not. no yeah. because Stu grimson <clears throat> close friend of mine says mm -hmm. he would have never played in the nhl mm -hmm. if there was not a role for fighting like mm -hmm. now he wouldn't mm -hmm. i don't know that you would what do you think uh, well, I, I have a pretty big ego, so I, 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 I think, I, think I, I would have found a way. Uh, but you know what I'm saying, though? But no, no. I, yeah, no, I, obviously, look, it, it's, it's, it was my calling card. It's, again, it's something that I'm extremely proud of, of what I was able to accomplish with it and, 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 and the role of the game. I'm, I'm also just somebody that understands that things change and the games change and, and, it, and it's not part of it as much anymore. I, I still love it when I see it. Uh, there's still moments when I see things that happen on the ice where I'm like, oh, I just wish I could get yeah. off there. Oh. <laughs> you would like um, to answer the bell. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> but but I understand, again, it, it's a different it's a different time, different world. And, and again, like the, the the overall team toughness, uh, I think, is 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 something that's that's even more. It, it can be even more intimidating, hmm. um, you know, just to speak on that. I, and, I, you know, I don't want to ramble too much, even though I do that a lot. But. You know, I, I, when everybody asks me, like, who are the toughest guys I ever played with? You know, I obviously people always want to say it's Paul Laws, and, and Paul was tough as, as they could be. I always say the top, one of the toughest guys I ever played with, or the two toughest guys, were, were Robert Zavala and Joe Sackick. Right? Robert, because Robert would just play. You know, and he played 25, 30 minutes, hard minutes, blocking shots, taking pucks to the face. Um, taking cross checks, doing whatever, and just get up and do it. The sh do it again next shift, next shift. Joey Joey had every game that he played, had every team's whole system trying to stop him. Every guy on the other team trying to give him that little extra, that little extra, just to try to stop him from doing what he had to do. And there was never a moment where he wasn't going to do what he needed to do to be a, an offensive guy. Um, and he knew that he had to do it every single night because that kid that, you know, that family spent their last three months uh, saving up to walk, go watch that one game for him to play, Joey had to be good every time he stepped on the ice, right? That's a whole different level of toughness and pressure than I ever had to deal with. Like, I'm the goofball. Like, I might They weren't paying to see you. <laughs> no, I mean, I was an added yes, bonus, but like, you know, yeah. I... If 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 Big Daddy lost, like no one cared. Like, like people move on. Like they, they, you'd have some maybe some memes about it. They'd have some jokes about it. But like, it doesn't change the factor, right? But like if Joe Joey had two bad months, that's that's your season, <laughs> you yeah. know. So I mean, it's it's toughness comes in a whole lot of different forms, right? And and that and that's my point. Like there's there's. Um, you know, the, 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 the bare knuckle brawlers, the tough guys of, 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 of times past, they were tough as nails and, and I honor and respect every single guy that did that. But I, I just think that there's a whole lot of different levels of toughness and that sometimes we get lost in and only look at that one part, part of toughness and not look at what the overall toughness of what a hockey player really is. You know, like I'm going to block that shot 
it's going to hurt, but I have to do it, so I'm just going to do it. You know, not even think about it. And there's a lot more guys that do that today because when I saw a slop shot coming, I was like, eh. That, guy, that guy's got all the heavy pads. He can take it. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Well, and you're speaking uh, her language because she loves Joe Sackick. Oh, Joe he, Sackick is. He was pretty good. Yeah, he was all right. <laughs> but you talk about, you know, like, I think it's a mental toughness that mm-hmm. the Panthers have that mm-hmm. goes on in the, mm-hmm. in the locker room, mm-hmm. in the dressing room that people don't see. Yeah. And when you look at a guy like Joe Sackick, what you just said about him, it's not something I would have ever thought of. Did Joe mm-hmm. Sackick do this? But it's like. Yeah, I can see he did that. That's why they won a Stanley Cup. That's why he was the captain. That's why he played for one franchise. That's Mm. why he never lost his cool, ever. He was always in control. And he leads by example. 100%. Yeah, Joey Joey never said anything. Uh, I sat beside him when I I played there. Like, our our stalls were beside each other. And he just, you know, was just a regular guy. Never, you know, never, he never had the big speeches or, the raw raw stuff that everybody thinks what leadership is he just he just showed up every day and played hard you know when when we go to practice uh if we had an 11 o'clock practice in Colorado you know uh Joey would be on the ice at 10 30 just working on a shot for a half hour just bucket of pucks just working on the shot and if Joey's out there at 10 30 then Paul Korea and 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 uh and uh Timo Solani were out there at 10 35 right or or I'm sorry 1025 right mm-hmm. <laughs> um you know the uh the hey dukes and the tangays would be out there at 1015 the slugs like me would be out there at 10 right like not because Joey said anything not and if you weren't out there he wasn't going to get up in your face and and yell and scream at you he might give you a look of like what are you doing you know but like we all fell in line to Joe. And it wasn't, again, it wasn't him like grabbing us by the neck or you got to play the Colorado way. It was just follow his example, you know, and um, he was a great leader that way. And, you know, I, 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 again, I played with some other guys that were, you know, incredible leader. Scott Mellonby was a leader like that as well. Right. You know, obviously he didn't have the accolades and um, the talent that Joe had, but like, just, <laughs> you know, that puck goes in the corner. Two guys are going to the puck. Mel's coming out with it. <laughs> every time like we, we we could trust that every single time and it wasn't and if he had a cross check you for it great if you had to take one great if he had a finesse and try to skate by you great but that was his puck and he was going to get it and and when you were as another player put in that same situation like your mindset was like i got to do it because if mel's doing it every single day, i got to do it that one opportunity i have so um yeah no they i again my my NHL career was 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 lucky in that way. I got to to meet, meet play with, um, play against, compete against, uh, just some incredibly skilled, legendary uh, players who were just tough as nails in everything they did, and and uh, they all have my respect. Yeah. We don't have hardly any time left, and I got a bunch left, so I... I ramble. I, no, that's <laughs> fine. It's all good. St- By the way, if you ever wonder if anybody's getting what you're saying, mm. we're getting it, especially her on the on the Sackick stuff, just the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the leading part. Yeah. And what a great captain. Yeah. And what a, and I hope people are listening and getting something out of it. But I got to ask you about the, all, the alumni game last year at the All-Star game. Your three goals in the first period, like, were you... <laughs> what? Just sniping. I mean, they, everything you touched went in. Yeah. Do you know what? When Rod told me that, I mean, do you I know? Was, what? I, I was in the NHL. I mean, <laughs> I mean, these goalies, all Samuels and Toby, they pulled them off the street. That's what I. But uh, what? I, when Rod told me that, I go. Wait a second. You just told me that Luongo played out. Yeah. And Worrell just got three goals. I mean, it was bonkers. <laughs> which was which is the bigger white rabbit? I mean, that's the question <laughs> I would ask. <laughs> Louis playing out or me scoring some goals? I mean, I wasn't it great? Did you have a little bit of the juices again? The rink was packed. Yeah. No. It was. It was. It was. Awesome. It, was a, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, the warm up was way too long. I, I I don't think that they should ever give us a twenty minute warm up. We're old. Let's get just drop the puck. Let's go. Uh, let's just start with that. Uh, but other than that, no, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, playing with uh, you know the alumni over the years, whether it was the older guys or, or some of the younger guys, like Yens and and uh, 
and Dave Booth. Um, you know, it was it was just a, a, a lot of fun. Second period, reality set in <laughs> of where we are in life. So the goal scoring stopped a little bit, but it was uh, it was again it was a lot of fun. Like just go to the net, get a rebound, put it in the back of the net. It was uh, it was it was. Uh, Hockey, hockey, one on one. It was such a blast. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'll ask you next time about the '97 Memorial Cup because I'm not done. <laughs> and a very good friend of mine was Perry Shockey on the Lethbridge bench. Yeah. So, you, so even though you were playing, you know what was going on, on the other side, right? That whole thing. I, I've uh, no, I don't. Know. <laughs> Their coach was suspended all year and all playoffs until the final of the Memorial. Oh yes, Cup. I heard about right? that. Right, Brian yeah. Maxwell. Yeah. Only something the CHL could do. <laughs> but I got to just ask you about your job and how people watching right now could help your efforts to get kids playing here. And it doesn't have to be on ice is what you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, no, I, again, I think it's, I think the important thing is just get out there and play, you know, it, and it, and obviously there could be in, in leagues, obviously at the, uh, at many of the ice rinks in, in the area, obviously we, we were in control of the, of the ice stand in Coral Springs and the, the new War Memorial in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, but there's many other rinks that are available that that if they want to get on the ice, they can they can do that as well there. But um, you know, it's as easy as just buying a stick and, and a ball and just going down the street and just shooting balls. You know, like that's a, what a lot of us did in Montreal growing up, right? Like it wasn't always about just being on the ice. So we we did have the luxury of having ponds and stuff of that nature, but uh, there was a lot of more street hockey that that was being played by everybody. Um, I you know I spent most of my life as a kid just. Um, you know, sitting in my basement playing with, with uh, you know, with a hockey stick and tennis balls and and uh, getting a lot of trouble for breaking walls and, and stuff mm. of that nature. But that was that was my childhood. Right. And, and uh, you know, that's I think that's what we're, we're, we what we want to do. That's what we want to get, you know, sticks in kids hands. Um, and I think once that happens, the joy that you can gain gain from it uh, is is incredible. And they'll become hockey fans in some way or, or shape or fashion, right? Whether it's as players, whether it's as spectators, whether it's as coaches, whether it's, um, you know, account executives that just like to play the game. Like that's, we want to, we want people uh, from all walks of life uh, and all um, demographics to just, just give it a shot. You know, it, it's a fun game and, and um, it, 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 it can open a lot of doors and, and, and get you to a lot of places. We'll play, right? Absolutely. If you need anybody. Yeah, couple, we'll help you couple out. Couple bodies. Let's get you out. There. <laughs> All <Absolutely>. right. <laughs> Peter, uh, you didn't disappoint. I knew it. I'll stop stalking you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> thank you so much. No problem. Thank One you. of the most popular Florida Panthers ever, Peter Worrell. Uh, thank you, Benny Boy. And Christian and all the rest of you, uh, thank you to DraftKings. Of course, you see, use the promo code THPN for special bonus offers from the Hockey Podcast Network and DraftKings. The crown is yours and also the Beach House uh, in Pompano and Baresco for the gift card for Peter. We'll see you next week right here on the Cats and Bolts podcast. Get everything fun. out you wanted to. I